I can rotate more here, I think. See my, my Hi there. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration um, for all Missouri students. This is sponsored by MOACAC, the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling, as well as StriveScan. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us on this Sunday afternoon. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we start the presentation. You can use the Q&A function on your screen to type questions um, to the presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off and so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so please be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week on that same website, moacac.org. Now I'm going to turn it over to our presenter. All right. Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Hannah Teske. You might also, um, if you've been to another session or are emailing with me later, if you have any questions. Um, also, my name is Hannah Steinbrenner. Um, so I will respond to either gladly. And I'm glad that you are all here and joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. And I do know that we are um, fairly limited to our 45 minutes. So I will just go ahead and get started um, once I can share my screen here. So hopefully you can see that. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we are gonna go over just a few things here um, throughout our 45 minutes together. So please, if you have questions as I'm going through, I'll do my best to address them as we go. Um, and, and, and if not, if I'm not able to get to everyone's questions, we, I will follow up um, with an email to you later to make sure that I'm answering your questions. So again, we're gonna be talking about um, throughout this, this presentation, these 45 minutes about your life as a student at Illinois, what all opportunities are available to you, um, what does it look like um, to be a student here at UIUC, but then we're also really gonna focus on the application and walk through all of those steps as well um, to make sure that there's no, um, no questions or anything like that once, we, once it comes time for you to start filling out our application. So for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And again, please send in questions. I can see the Q&A, um, I have that pulled up. So I'll be answering those as we go through if anyone has them. But again, thanks so much for joining me today. So when we think about the University of Illinois, we really think about the power of I. So what is the power of your degree, your experience, your time here with us as a student um, throughout these four years, but not only that, but really after graduation as well and what all that looks like um, for your post-graduation life. And what are those next steps and what are those opportunities available to you um, from your experience here as a student? In terms of thinking about who the university is as a campus, um, we are definitely a large school environment. There are about 34,000 undergraduate students studying here with us at the University of Illinois. Um, so in each incoming freshman class, we do have about 7,500 new students. So likely quite a bit bigger than your freshman, or excuse me, your high school class. So you really are gonna be joining students from all across the country and really the world um, throughout your time here as a student. We do bring together students from all 50 states and over 110 countries to study with us here in Champaign-Urbana. Um, I do just want to mention and just highlight, um, or at least to mention kind of what our campus looks like now. I'm in the midst of COVID-19 and the changes we've had to make. Um, all students have the option to either return to campus and take classes in a hybrid setting, or they also have the opportunity if they did not feel comfortable coming to campus to stay home and take classes fully online as well. So again, students have the choice to do so either way. About 20 to 30% of our classes are still being offered in person on campus, very much so in a safe and monitored manner. Manner. So we were excited to be able to do so and welcome students back. Um, but again, safe, safety is the most important thing for our current students. So again, just wanted to highlight that and just make sure um, that I'm um, at least bringing up what that looks like um, for this fall semester in this world of COVID-19. Okay. In terms of who our undergraduate students are, we are a public institution here in the state of Illinois. So many of our students are Illinois residents. However, as you can see on the screen, a very large portion of our students do come from out of state and international communities as well. So again, a very global diverse um, population bringing together students from really all across the world, all into our community. Okay, all right. So here at the University of Illinois, on the screen what you're seeing now are the academic colleges and communities that exist here on our campus. 
So we are most often known of known for our Granger College of Engineering, our Geese College of Business. However, that is not all that we are known for. Um, again, we still have strong programs within agricultural fields and even in fine and applied arts. Each of our fine and applied arts programs within that college are all ranked within the top 10 within their respective areas. So again, there are over 150 different majors across these academic communities that you see on the screen. So a lot of different ways to kind of explore those interests and those passions to really find out what the best fit is for you. There is a link on the screen and I really encourage all students to go and reference that. It is a strong resource where it will show you not only what each of the majors mean. So if you're wanting to know what is industrial design? What is chemical engineering? What does that mean at Illinois? It will share with you a paragraph about what that major means, but it will also share with you what are those first destinations of students after graduation, what companies they're working for, what graduate programs they've enrolled with, what those starting salaries are, et cetera, to show you not only what opportunities you're gonna have, like I said, throughout your four years here, but also that next step after graduation as well. It's a great resource to help you navigate all of the different majors here at Illinois that exist. So again, it's a really great resource for you um, to explore all the programs, especially if you're still deciding between a few different programs and what is a great fit for you. Um, that's a great resource to go to. It will also share with you related majors. So you could say, okay, I'm in, interested in the systems engineering and design program, but what other majors might be related to that interest here at Illinois? And it will share with you a few different of those, of those other majors that might be a good fit for you. I do wanna highlight um, two programs specifically that you're seeing on the screen. And first is the School of Information Sciences. We are excited that we are just this fall semester are welcoming our first undergraduate class um, of students here um, to study within information sciences at the undergraduate level. For the past few decades, we've had a graduate program in library and information sciences that has been consistently ranked number one um, for the past many years. And we're excited to have this as an offering for undergraduate students um, starting just this fall. So students applying this fall semester fall um, to start in the fall of 2021 will be our second class um, that we'll be able to welcome to campus at the undergraduate level for this. So again, it's a fantastic program for students that have interest in, in really interpreting and understanding data that have some interest in computer science, but also interest in economics, sociology, a really wide and varied um, interest can all really be brought together within that program on our campus. It's a great new program, and I just want to encourage students to, to look into that as it is newer um, and not quite as well known um, as some of our other programs are, but again, still a really great program for our students. And um, the last one I always like to mention is our Division of General Studies. So if you're just really unsure of what it is you're wanting to pursue and do, um, you're still in the process of deciding, and um, you're really not sure, the Division of General Studies is a great place to start on our campus. Um, you have the opportunity for up to two years to be undecided and major, where you'll have the opportunity to explore your different major interests um, before ultimately pursuing that major choice. So it is by no means, um, we'll put you at a disadvantage um, to graduate on time or anything like that. It's a great place to explore your interests if you're really unsure of what it is you want to pursue. So quite a bit of information there. Um, again, I just strongly encourage students to go to the, the link on the screen to learn more and then to explore all of the majors that our campus has to offer. Okay. And like I said, um, in terms of talking about Champaign-Urbana as we were earlier, um, for your prep for your excuse me, um, just perspective on where we're located. We are about two and a half hours south of Chicago and then about three hours away from St. Louis. So just to kind of pinpoint where we are um, in East Central Illinois. Um, we are very much a college town community, unlike you know, larger cities where there might be multiple universities scattered throughout. Really, the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana is at the heart and center of our communities of Champaign and Urbana, um, and really is very much so a focal point of our community. Champaign-Urbana is a very supportive community of our campus, and there are many opportunities for students to have those jobs, internships, and good hands-on experience on campus, but also out in the community as well. So for anyone interested in pursuing a health field, whether that's medical school or whatever else it might be, um, it's always a great opportunity for you to go and work um, and get good hands-on job experience at our Carl Hospital or our um, 
Carl or OSF Healthcare. They are two large hospitals that are not even a five minute bus ride away from campus. So if there's not necessarily an internship or hands-on volunteer experience you're looking for on campus, it very well could be an opportunity located right off campus that you could also pursue um, in and get good experience with as well. But again, it's a very accessible community. I never encourage students to bring a car. We have a bus system that runs every 10 minutes and will take you anywhere you need to go on our campus, but also off campus as well. So again, lots of opportunities, very easy to get navigate to get around. Um, it is East Central Illinois. So if you like to bike, I would encourage you to bring a bike because um, again, you'll it's there are about nine, nine miles of bike paths all across our campus or it's just a really easy campus to walk as well. You'll never have an uphill battle. We are in East Central Illinois where it's just flat as a pancake, but again, it also helps in making campus a really accessible and easy community to navigate. There are lots of events that are hosted all throughout the year as well that are always a great opportunity for students to go and participate with. And consistently, we are ranked one of the best college towns in America um, for a lot of reasons. I think for accessibility, for the great local food scene there is here, all sorts of great local restaurants um, for you to go and explore as a student, and just overall the sense of community and um, safety that there is here in Champaign-Urbana as a whole. So again, just to highlight the community we have here in Champaign-Urbana. And for perspective, if you are not familiar um, with where we are, here's a map that can really just kind of help pinpoint a little bit more um, about where we are. Again, about two and a half hours south of Chicago and three hours from St. Louis. So very much so right in the cross um, between, between that. Okay. All right. So when it comes to getting involved and really what it looks like to be a student at Illinois, um, that can mean a lot of different things. And it really depends on what it is you are really most interested in wanting to pursue of what all opportunities you're going to have here. I don't want you to look at the screen and think that this is a checklist to say that um, you must do all of these things or your experience at Illinois is not going to be complete because that's very much so not true. Um, being on a large campus like Illinois, there are going to be really vast and almost seemingly endless opportunities for you to take advantage of, to take part in, to get involved with as a student. It's really up to you um, throughout your time to really figure out what it is you're most passionate about, you're most interested in, and really dive deep and get involved within those experiences here on campus. Whether that's getting involved in one of our 1800 different student groups and organizations, um, to cheering on one of our 19 Division I Big Ten sports, um, to getting involved with one of the cultural houses on campus that we have here. Again, there's lots of ways for you to go and really make your experience here your own through the different offerings we have here on our campus. Um, the ability to communicate well um, and effectively to work well in groups and teams are skills you're going to need no matter the industry you choose to pursue. And so I always encourage students to go and work with our undergraduate leadership, our leadership center here on campus that helps students develop those skills through putting on different programming, um, different events, you can even minor in leadership studies, but again, lots of ways to continue to develop those skills through the resources here on our campus to make sure that you're successful in whichever industry you choose to pursue after graduation. Um, Obviously, we're not traveling right now for many obvious reasons, but what I hope we'll be able to again in the near future. We do offer about 300 different study abroad programs on a yearly basis, and so hopefully we'll be able to provide those to students again here in the near future. But again, many ways here on campus to really take, take the offerings and what's available to you and really make your time and experience here your own. Okay, and so just a little bit of a breakdown as to kind of what all students get involved with. Again, there's no one set time or way to do so. There's many ways for you to get involved with these things. We are a research one institution, so there are many opportunities for undergraduate students to have great hands-on experience working on different research projects with our faculty as early from your freshman year. Again, some students choose to get involved their freshman year, but also others wait until they're an upperclassman towards their junior and senior year. The choice is really yours with what opportunities there are. It's very easy to get involved with research here on our campus, whether that's getting to know your professors in your classes, Every class here at Illinois is taught by a professor and almost every professor is conducting research of some kind. So again, lots of ways to network with them, get to know them, see what opportunities they might have on their research projects. We also have a research park, um, which 
is a collection of about 500 different, excuse me, about 100 different companies, many of which are Fortune 500 companies that have offices here to work with Illinois students on some different projects for their companies. So a lot of great ways to get hands-on experience working for those companies throughout your time on campus. Or if you at all are of an entrepreneurship mindset, you want to have your own startup company, you have that that idea, um, there are many ways to get funding to do that as well. Um, through Research Park, through Enterprise Works, and other resources here, here on our campus. So again, many ways to kind of explore and pursue that. Research is very much, you know, prevalent within, you know, the STEM field, but even across all majors, across all disciplines, even within the College of Engineer, or excuse me, College of Education, they're doing different resources research on what are some ways to best and most effectively teach STEM topics to middle and elementary age students. So again, working in the community with local elementary schools here um, to really um, kind of dive deep and study within that. So again, research is prevalent across all of our campus. I didn't mention earlier, but we do have about 300 study abroad programs that go abroad each year. Again, when it is safe to travel, um, I do just want to highlight that. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to provide those opportunities to students again, again here soon. Okay. All right. We also understand that that transition from high school to college is a really big transition to make. You by no means are going to be doing that on your own. Um, we have many resources and um, support service centers here to help support you throughout your time. I think the most important thing to know is if you choose Illinois and you choose to come to our campus, all you need to do is ask because likely there will be two if not three or four um, different centers on our campus that could all help support you with what it is that you might might need. Again, these are the largest support centers that we have here. Um, All together, there are over 30 to help our students. So really anything you might need, that resource exists on our campus to help you. If you're feeling homesick, anything like that, we do have our counseling center where you can have a same day appointment there. So very accessible um, to get support from. We do have one career center that serves the entire campus community. So that will help, they will help you with things like writing, Res resumes, um, writing cover letters, doing mock job interview preparations. They have a, a closet of professional clothes if you were, need, were in need of anything for an interview you might have. Um, so again, anything you might need, they're there to support you through that. However, every one of our academic communities and colleges that we talked about earlier also has their own career center. And that's where they'll really, um, they've done a very great job of networking to have strong industry, um, industry relations um, with different companies that come to our campus very often to recruit and hire Illinois students. So again, if you're looking for a specific type of job or a graduate program, they'll be there to assist you because likely they, they, will, they have strong knowledge of the different um, jobs and internships that you might be interested in pursuing. Um, being in about the fifth week of classes, they're about to start them this fall on campus. We are in the midst of our season of career fairs that happen in starting the third week of classes in the fall. So many ways for students to, dip, to network even virtually now um, with, different, with many different professionals for jobs and in internships as well. So again, in really every aspect of your life here as a student, there's going to be at least one, if not more than one, two or three different resource centers to help support you throughout your time here as a student. Okay. As a student, um, as an incoming student, your very freshman year, um, you are going to be asked to live within university housing or private certified housing. Altogether, there is about 35 different residence halls to choose from. They're very much so scattered all across our campus. Um, within that, there are 11 living learning communities. So those living learning communities are essentially, they bring together students that have a wide variety of topics all together um, to live within one community that all focuses around one topic or idea. One is focused on business. There's a business um, living learning community, a global crossroads community that connects students from all across the world. One focused on leadership and honors living learning community. One titled Whimsy for women interested in math, science, and engineering. Altogether, there's 11 in total um, and a, a very great experience for you to really have a community within the community of your residence hall. So something I strongly encourage all students to look into. It is a fantastic experience to get to really find your a group of students 
from move-in day before classes start that all share your same, same goals, your same interest um, within that. So again, a great opportunity for you. After that freshman year, the choice is really yours. If you love your, your housing experience, you are guaranteed housing for all four years. You can continue within that same or a different residence hall after that. Or if you would prefer, you always have the option to move out and live um, on off-campus housing after that first year. So again, the choice is really yours, what you choose to do um, with your housing experience um, after that, that one year residency requirement. Okay. All right. And so like I like I mentioned when we when we got started, it's very much so, you know, thinking about your experience and your time and yes, what are those opportunities that are going to help set you up for a great job, but then also what are those opportunities you're going to have post graduation. I always encourage students if you really want to know exactly where your degree can take you, what are those opportunities we've seen our past students go, our current alumni, where they've gone to work, what they've gone to do. I strongly encourage students to go to the link that's on the screen now. So what you can do here is it is a survey that the seniors take each year upon graduation. So that has been done for the past four or five years now at this point. It will share with you um, where those students are working, so what companies they've gone to work for, um, what the starting salaries are for students, and then also if they're attending a graduate program, what are those graduate schools that they're attending. So it's broken down by college and by major to show you this information. So again, a really great way to say, okay, so I wanna major in business at Illinois where can I go work? What are those opportunities I'm going to have? And this is a really good place to kind of start that search to kind of start to navigate what that might look like. Obviously, you are not limited to the experiences of our, of our past students and what they've gone on to do. However, I do think it's a great place to at least get that baseline to know kind of what are some of those um, company partnerships that we have on our campus, where most often do we see our students going to work. So again, a really great resource for you just to see exactly where your Illinois degree can take you. On the screen now, you see some of those top employers that we see our students going to work for. Um, but again, there are almost 10,000 employers on our campus and even now virtually working to recruit and hire Illinois students for different jobs and internships. So again, just quite a bit of information shared there that I always encourage students to go and look at to get a good sense of what that means. So, that is a lot of information and a lot of information fairly quickly. Um, however, for the sake of time, I just wanna make sure that we're, we're staying on track to go through the application as well. And then also, if you have any questions, so just please make sure you're putting those in the question section and I'll answer those as we go. But now, I really wanna switch gears here to really kind of focus on our application and what it looks like to apply to Illinois. Just so that way, if you do have any questions, I can kind of help navigate that and answer those for you as we go through. But hopefully the information I share here in this presentation will answer um, all of the questions you might have about this. So let's go ahead and get started. And I do wanna make the note here that our application does not change much from year to year. And there have been a few changes made this year, which I will highlight. But again, please keep in mind that the dates and deadlines are specific to the students that are applying for entry for the fall 2021. So for current seniors right now, for any junior or sophomore that may be listening, Again, all of this information is still likely to be relevant. There might just be a few, few changes for next year, as there always are. So I just encourage you to touch base with us again before completing that application. But the majority of this information is absolutely still going to be relevant to you. We do follow a similar timeline from year to year. Um, and so on the screen now, what you're seeing are our dates and deadlines. This year, um, we are currently right now in our early action filing period. I always like to make the caveat and the note that early action is not the same as early decision, where if you're applying to a school early decision, um, you're essentially at that time committing to attend that school. That is by no means the case, okay? With early action, what it means is it's going to give you priority review and consideration for your major and for all scholarships, scholarship opportunities at Illinois. However, you are ultimately still going to have until May 1st, that national decision day, to accept or decline your offer of admission, okay? So again, there, I always encourage students, if possible, to apply to us early action, as it will only increase your chances of being admitted to Illinois. 
So again, on the screen, you're seeing the dates and deadlines from September 1st to November 15th is our early action timeframe. So all students that apply within that window are considered early action. All students that apply, you know, between November 16th and January 5th are considered regular action. And so January 5th is the very last day you can apply to Illinois. Something different this year, all students will be notified of their, of their decision in mid-February. So again, this is something that is different. Um, again, priority is still given to students that apply early action. So even though all students are notified on the same date, I would still encourage you, if possible, to apply to our campus early action, okay? But again, this is what it looks like for our dates and deadlines this year, okay? So when it comes to applying, this is the full list of what you need to submit to us. Okay, so things you're not seeing on this list are things like resumes, letters of recommendation, um, supplemental um, materials, anything like that. Everything can be self-reported to us in the online application itself, aside from an application fee of $50, okay? So with that, we won't even want a copy of your high school transcripts or test scores, as all of that information as well is self-reported in the application. Okay, so these are the two things you need to submit to us to have a fully complete application to apply to Illinois. Now, this doesn't mean wait until that November 15th or that January 5th deadline. I strongly encourage if you can to just make sure you get your application to us at least a few days before that, um, just to make sure that there's no tech glitches. But again, everything that you need to submit to us can be submitted in the online application itself. We are on the coalition application. However, we are not on the Common App. So you will not find us there if you're applying through the Common App. However, you will find us on the coalition application. It is similar in concept to the Common App where you can submit one application and apply to multiple schools at the same time. However, they are very different portals. So I just wanna be mindful of that. Otherwise, we do have our own MyIlini application that you can submit. It's from, you can find it on our admissions webpage. And just to show you, if you visit our admissions webpage, which I have pulled up now, this top right corner um, up here, you'll see this word, it's my Illini, and that's where you'll find our application if you wanna apply directly um, to us that way. We have no preference which you choose to submit. It looks the exact same to us either way, okay? Um, so again, no preference at all. The choice is completely yours, which you choose to submit to us to complete your application, okay? I will say, um, if you're applying through coalition and the only reason you're submitting the coalition application is to apply to Illinois, that's when I would encourage you to just apply through my Illini. And the reason being that if you have an issue or you're stuck somewhere on our application with what we're asking, um, you can call our office and we can see the black backside of that application and help walk you through that. So again, I do just wanna highlight that, um, highlight that as the only reason that I would definitely encourage students to apply through my Illini. Okay. So what do we look at when we're reviewing applications? Okay, um, I do wanna make the note here that if you're interested in applying to a performance-based major, um, that, that will also require um, an audition um, or an audition with the College of Fine and Applied Arts directly. So if you are, I just strongly encourage you to reach out directly to our College of Fine and Applied Arts as you will be completing that supplemental, that talent audition portion um, with them. However, even if you're applying to a performance-based major within the College of Fine and Applied Arts, you will still need to complete the general application for admission, including all of these items on the screen here. So when we're looking at these applications, we're doing our best to take a holistic look at your application and consider all elements that you submit to us when reviewing those applications here in our office. So again, all of this is self-reported in the application itself. There's no need to send official documents to us at this time. We're going to look at your grades and your course rigor, okay? So when I say course rigor, I mean things like AP classes, dual credit courses, if you are an on an IB curriculum, your IB curriculum, honors classes, et cetera, whatever is offered at your high school. And we do have school profiles on file for every high school. And so we do have that context when reviewing applications. We hope that you're taking some challenging classes, some of those more advanced and rigorous classes at your high school with what's offered to you, as those classes are really going to be what's your best preparation um, for the types of classes you're going to experience here on our campus. So we're going to look at your grades and course rigor and how well you did within your classes in high school. 
We're also gonna look at your ACT or your SAT test scores. This year, we are test optional, okay? So you do have the opportunity when applying to Illinois to submit your application to us and without test scores, that is fine. So if you are not able to take a test or you're not happy with your test score, that is fine. You do not have to submit it to us. Um, you can apply test optional and there are no other elements you'll need to complete to have a completed application with us, okay? So again, the choice is yours with what you choose to do. If you think your test score that you were able to take is a good reflection of your academic skill and ability, then absolutely you're able to submit that to us and we'll review and consider that within our application. However, if you're not happy with your score, you are not able to take a test score this year, that is fine. You are able to complete your application without it. And just so you are aware, um, we are test optional for all programs on our campus. There are no exceptions to this test optional policy, okay? If you were able to take a test score and somehow this year you were able to take it more than one time, I do want to make the note that if you, you can submit more than one score to us, the way that it will work is we will look at your highest scores if they come from different exams. But what we will not do, we will not super score or create a new composite score for you. Okay, so if you did better in the EBRW section on the SAT and the math section on the ACT, We'll look at those two highest scores, but what we won't do is we won't super score those together to make a new composite score for you, okay? But again, if you do submit to us lower scores, we will only use and review the highest scores we get here in our office for your application, okay? And again, all of that self-reported too, okay? We are gonna look at your extracurricular, so what all you've done throughout high school, and we're gonna look at your essay as well. Okay, so again, these are the main elements of what we're reviewing, what we're considering throughout our application um, when making dis admission decisions. Okay, I will say though, if you do apply and you, you enroll and choose to accept your offer at Illinois, we will want a copy of your high school transcript and those official test scores ne early next summer. So that is when we will ask for those official documents from you. But now during the application process, you won't need to worry, worry about sending those to us. So we also do have an essay um, kind of to round it out for what all we, we look at and review. And so for the sake of this, I'm gonna open up our application and kind of just walk through and show you what, what the essay looks like and some advice I have for you um, on completing those. So applying through my line A, this is what it looks like if you choose to apply through this portal. Okay, and so again, all the items that we need from you are over here on the left side, left hand side of the screen now. But this is our essay here um, of what we, what we look at. Um, and it is a pretty short and concise essay of what we're reviewing and what we're looking for when applying to Illinois. It is only three to 400 words long and it is a hard cutoff at 400. So if you try to type 402, 403 words, um, you're not going to be able to fit those last few words in there, okay? So again, it's three to 400 words and we really wanna hear about you and your interest in your career goals. Okay, so that's really the focus of your essay and what we wanna hear from you. I strongly encourage you to be concise and stay on topic to make sure you're answering the question that we're asking within this, okay? So again, I have some, some pieces of advice shared within this, this essay here, um, but again, we really wanna hear from you and learn about your experiences and what's prompted your interest in the major it is you're applying to. So um, for example, if you knew from when you were you know, four or five years old, you had a lemonade stand um, in your front yard, you knew you wanted to own your own business one day eventually, that, and you're applying to our Geese College of Business, um, that's great. Um, I'm very happy for you, but I encourage you to make sure your examples and experience are more relative to your high school experience and time frame, not from back when you were very young, okay? So make sure you're keeping it relevant within that. And again, make sure you're staying on topic. When applying to Illinois, um, you are going to be applying directly to a major you're most interested in, okay? So within that, it's important to make sure that you're drawing on the connections um, of what your career goals are to connect it to the major you're applying to, okay? Um, very often, your essay is gonna be the very first thing we read when we're looking at your application because we wanna hear more about you. So if you're applying to our biology major, but all you discuss and all you talk about within your essay is your love for writing and creative writing, um, we're gonna think that you might not be the best fit for that program because that doesn't quite align with what our biology program is at Illinois. 
right? Um, we would think that you would be a better fit for our English or creative writing major that we have here. Um, so again, just keep that in mind, be mindful of that when writing your, your essay. We wanna hear about you, your experiences, what's prompted your choice in applying to the major you're applying to, and then what you hope to do with that after graduation. As long as you keep it um, within that, that is definitely what I would um, encourage that you do within that essay. So please let me know if you have any questions about that. You can also, um, just to kind of highlight one more thing um, within this essay or within the application is you can put down a second choice major. So when applying to Illinois, um, you are applying directly to a major. Um, again, you have the opportunity to put down a second choice major. And this does get a little confusing. So within this, if you only put down one major, we make the assumption here in our office that you only want to attend the University of Illinois if admitted to the one and only program you're applying for. So if you're admissible, great. We will admit you to that program. However, if you are not admissible to that major, that's where the review process stops. You will not be considered for anything else on our campus. However, if you do put down a second choice major, you will be reviewed for your first choice program. If admissible, we will admit you. However, if not admissible to that first choice program, that's when we'll review you for your second choice major and any other, other avenue of admission we think you'd be a good fit for. There is no disadvantage, no downside to putting down a second choice major to getting admitted to that first choice program. Okay, so I highly recommend that you do so. Um, so again, just within that, it will never um, impact your chances of being admitted to that first choice program. As a student from out of state, as a Missouri resident, I would just strongly encourage you to not put down the Division of General Studies uh, as a second choice major on your application. There are a few limits to this when, when it comes time to apply, is that anything that has the word computer in the name, so anything like computer science, computer engineering, computer science plus, and any of those related programs, along with information sciences and a few other majors within the, the Granger College of Engineering, they can only be be put down as a first choice program on your application. So again, you won't see every major available for this, but again, I strongly encourage that students put down a second choice major on their application if it fits within your goals. Okay, you do have to write a second essay. However, if you're talking about similar things within both essays, because they're similar programs you're applying to, that's completely fine. There's that, that is completely fine to do. But what I just will not encourage you to do is to put down both major or both essays in the exact same text or the same essay in both text boxes is what I'm trying to say there. So again, just my, my piece of advice when it, when it comes to writing those essays there. So hopefully, hopefully that helps answer um, any questions you might have about what it looks like um, when completing those essays on our application. Um, but again, this is all the elements that we're going to use um, when it comes time to reviewing applications for admission. Okay. So I already gave you quite a bit of application advice there when it comes to writing essays. Um, but again, the most important thing is, uh, one more thing to note is if you are thinking of applying, I would just encourage you to apply um, by the early action deadline of November 15th, which at this time, we still have plenty of time until then, right? Plenty of time to get there. Whether you submit it today or on November 14th, it will be reviewed the exact same way. I just, again, don't encourage students to wait until the day of the deadline to make sure that the system doesn't crash at all, that there's no tech glitches or anything like that. So if you can just get it a day or two, um, get it to us a day or two beforehand, I would definitely just encourage that to make sure that technology doesn't fail um, for whatever reason that might be. But hopefully that helped. If you have any questions um, more specific to what I talked about, um, please put those in the chat. Um, and I'm happy to help answer those as we go through um, if you have any questions at all about that. Okay. And while we see if there are questions, I do just want to put our contact information up on the screen now. Um, and I just want you to know that we are here and happy to help answer any questions that you might have um, throughout any time of this process here. Um, our, our line, our phone line here is staffed from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, every day with counselors. So anytime you call us, you'll get immediately connected to myself or another counselor here in our office, or you can always email us as well. We are hosting a variety of um, virtual events as well if you'd like to connect with some of our current students or with a college 
on our campus that you might be interested in. There are appointments and meetings available for you to do so um, almost every day of the week as well. So scattered throughout the week, we have those opportunities for you to connect with. And we also just published a virtual tour on our our admissions page as well. So again, we unfortunately are not able to offer any on-campus visit programs, but are continuing to provide additional resources on our website um, to help you navigate this process and figure out not only what are good schools for you um, to be applying to, but also just to kind of help you explore all that's available and offered to you on our campus here at Illinois. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, please let us know if you have any questions, but otherwise I think that was all I wanted to cover during this session. So thank you so much for sticking with me to the end and it was great to connect with everyone um, during our time together. So again, thank you so much for taking time on your Sunday afternoon to learn more about Illinois and please let us know if you have any questions at all. Okay. All right, thank I, you. Oh, so I do. Much, I see one question, apologies, that I just wanna um, address very quickly is, um, do we have any in-person college visits coming up? And unfortunately we do not. Um, at this time, our focus is having our, our current students um, safely be on our campus to make sure that we can stay open for the full semester and will not have to send students home. Um, so our focus is really on our current students right now and we are not able to host any in-person visits so we are just encouraging students to visit us virtually on our webpage and we will share um, with everyone once we're able to host visits again, which will hopefully be soon, but I do not have a date yet as to when that will be. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please know that when you close the window, there will be a quick survey with just a few questions and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide there. Um, be sure to check out moacac.org for additional sessions, and don't forget that the recording from today will be available in about a week on moacac.org. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Have a great day.